What if you only needed one simple editing technique to transform a dull and lacklustre raw file like this into a colourful, vibrant photo that pops like this? What if that technique is one that you're already doing in Photoshop, but you just need a tiny tweak to supercharge its effectiveness? How many old photos would you go back and breathe new life into? In this video, I'm showing you what this technique is and the one tweak that you can make to finally start using it to its full potential to create amazing landscape photos that pop. To start, let me show you why this common technique is holding your editing back if you're not using it the way that I'm about to show you. Because one of the first adjustments that newcomers to Photoshop learn is the curves adjustment. You can use it to make the image brighter, make the image darker, and to alter the contrast in the image. And the good news is that these three adjustment types make up probably 80% or more of what it takes to make a photo pop. The problem is that in their standard form, they affect the whole image at once. But like I said, with one small tweak that used to be a long and complicated expert level process, but can now be done in just a few clicks, you have the power to control exactly where these adjustments go and exactly how much they go there. Let me show you how easy it is. So what we're gonna be doing is basically following the same steps over and over, but for different parts of the image. So let me just run through it once and then you'll see what I mean. So starting off with a curves adjustment, I'm gonna add some contrast with an S curve here. So this looks great in the sky. However, we can see we've darkened all of this stuff way too much. So what we have to do is brush with a black brush into the layer mask to conceal the curves adjustment in those darker areas. We need to do it without going over the edges into the sky. Now the tool that's gonna to make this otherwise expert level technique easy and accessible in just a couple of clicks is actually something that I made and you can download for free from the link in the description and pin comment. But it's this plugin up here. I know many of you watching this video have probably already downloaded it, but if you don't have it, go grab it in the link in the description and pin comment, totally free. So the goal for this adjustment is to brush with a black brush out of these dark areas where the curves adjustment has darkened these mountains too much. So we're gonna load a shadow selection, let's say a shadows two or a three. We're gonna see a selection being loaded with these marching ants. I'm gonna hide it just for a second, control H on the keyboard or command H. The selection's still active, but what's gonna happen now, if I just take my black brush and brush through the uh, dark parts of the image here, and you'll see how this is getting lighter again because I'm brushing away the contrast that made it darker. So I'll just hold Alt or Option on the keyboard and click on the mask so we can see it. And all of the black and dark gray areas are the areas of the image where we're hiding this contrast adjustment so we can see if I disable the whole thing and then bring it back, it's now adjusting all of the image apart from the dark parts that I brushed out. So from here on in, the rest of the process, the whole editing process for this image is going to be make an adjustment that looks good in one part of the image and then brush it out of all the others. And we're gonna use the luminosity selection to make sure that our brushes are only brushing where we wanted to brush. So let's have another look. Let's add another curves adjustment and we'll, we'll just brighten the image this time. So something like that. So I'm thinking it looks good in the mountains here, but I don't want to brighten the whole sky. So this time I need to load a highlight selection so that I can brush this out of the highlights. So I'm gonna click on the layer mask and let's load a highlights two selection. And if you're wondering which one to choose, and why I'm choosing highlights one versus highlights two and all the rest of it. After you download the plugin, there'll be some instructions and some getting started tips on what this all means. Now, the selection is active, so I can take a black brush and I can brush into the sky now and remove this brightening effect that the curves adjustment has added. And if I look at the mask now, we can see the sky here is black, which means we're hiding this darkening effect apart from just at the top there actually. So let's deselect. I'll load another selection, maybe a highlights one this time. Let's see, do we want this to be brightening the whole foreground as much as it is? Maybe not. So let's brush through. And actually this time I'm gonna deselect the luminosity selection. So control D or command D. So, you know, we don't have to worry about that detailed edge between the mountain and the sky. So now we can see we're just brightening the mountain. And let me just 
do a bit more of this, some black against the sky in the mask to remove the brightening effect from the top of the sky there. And there we have a nicely isolated mountain brightening adjustment. So let's continue on to another adjustment. Let's add another curves. And you know what, let's go for some more contrast and see how good it looks in the water. So I'm just adjusting the, the shape of the S curve here to try and give the water in the foreground a really nice amount of, uh, of pop. And do you know what, that's actually quite nice like that. But the problem with this contrast adjustment is now that it's overexposed the brightest highlights. So this time, because we only want to repair the brightest highlights with our brush in the layer mask, I'm going to select a higher number. So the higher the number, the more closer towards the brightest highlights we're going to be isolating. So let's go highlights four. And now that's going to allow me to brush with a black brush through here, just in those really bright parts of the sky. We can see if I zoom in now, disable the layer mask, we can see the repair job that it's done. So this is before I masked and this is after. So overexposed highlights, recovered highlights. And if I look at the layer mask now, it's because the black brush has been able to pick out those brightest parts without me having to brush right up against the edge of the mountains there. And again, that's thanks to the luminosity selection. I think we've already done quite a lot just with three adjustments. Look at this, here's the before and here's the after. Maybe I'll just add one more for good measure. And you know what, let's just brighten the image like that. And I'm gonna do something a little bit differently this time. I'm gonna invert the layer mask, control or command I. It's gonna make the whole layer mask black. And this time I'm not gonna use the luminosity selection because I wanna make like a really broad, kind of just a big general brightening effect just in the middle, kind of emulating like a vignette, but kind of not. So let me just undo that, I'll do that again. So I just wanna brighten the jetty there. And I've done that, we can see the layer mask is just a big ball, that's fine. It's a nicely sort of, there's a nice gradient going from the middle to the outside of that. So it's not like we're seeing the brush strokes super obviously. So we're just getting a nice brightening effect in the middle. Now having done that, this brush has gone over the edges of the mountains into the sky. I don't want that. So now I'm gonna select, uh, let's go highlights two, select a black brush and I'll just brush into the sky. And now look at the layer mask here. We can see that I've basically made the sky completely black. So none of this adjustment now, well, maybe a little bit still, but I can maybe get rid of that just up there in the top of the sky. But yeah, that adjustment now, originally it was just a big circle. Now it's a big circle, but with the sky cut out like that. Click the link in the description and pin comment to download my free plugin that I used in this video so that you too can harness the power of luminosity masking in your editing in just a few clicks.